Welcome to Warhammer 40k 8th Edition Battle Report 54. 2,000 points, Zinch versus Ultramarines. This will be the big rule book, Eternal War Mission, The Relic, and we will be rolling for a random map deployment today. Let's begin by taking a quick look around the board. So beginning on this side of the board, we have the first two foot by two foot section, the middle two foot by two foot section, and the third two foot by two foot section. And then moving over to the other side of the board, we have the fourth two foot by two foot section, this middle two foot by two foot section, and finally this two foot by two foot section. And of course, the relic has been placed directly in the middle of the battlefield. And so now we'll roll for the random map deployment, rolling a five, which is frontline assault. So on a roll of a one, two, or a three, Zinch will begin to deploy at the top of the board, and the Ultramarines will deploy along the bottom. And on a four, five, or six, it'll be the opposite. So Zinch deploying along the bottom, and the Ultramarines deploying along the top. And here's the roll, rolling a five. So Zinch will begin to deploy along the bottom of the board, and the Ultramarines will begin to deploy along the top. And now on a roll of a one, two, or a three, Zinch will begin to deploy first. And on a four, five, or six, the Ultramarines will deploy first. Rolling a three, so Zinch will begin to deploy first. We will be back after the deployment. The deployment is now finished. Zinch began to deploy first, but the Ultramarines finished deploying first, which means that the Ultramarines will go first unless Zinch is able to successfully seize the initiative. Let's take a quick look around the board at where each army placed all of their units. Beginning with the Ultramarines deployment, we have the first squad of five tactical marines, Land Raider number one, with the chaplain and squad of three assault centurions embarked inside, the second squad of five tactical marines, the warlord Rabout Gilliman, the third squad of five tactical marines, and finally Land Raider number two, with the second chaplain and second squad of three assault centurions embarked inside. Moving over to the Zinch deployment, we will begin with the Soul Grinder of Zinch, the squad of six screamers, the first squad of ten pink horrors. The second squad of ten pink horrors. This squad has the demonic icon and the instrument of chaos. The warlord Kairos Fateweaver. The Flux Master. The first thousand sons deem Prince of Zinch with wings. Lord to change with rod of sorcery and the impossible robe. The third squad of ten pink horrors. Second thousand sons deem Prince of Zinch with wings. And finally the third thousand sons deem Prince of Zinch with wings. For this battle report, the Ultramarines will have access to 11 command points, thanks to Rabout Gilmon being their warlord and Zinch will have access to 8 plus D3 command points thanks to Kairos Fateweaver being their warlord. And so now we will roll for the D3 command points. The symbol is the 6. Rolling just 1, so Zinch will have 9 command points total. For a full overview of both armies with all of the war gear that they are bringing, please check out the pregame show which was released at the beginning of the group. The link for the pregame show will be in the description down below. And now we will roll to see if Zinch is able to successfully seize the initiative on a 6. And they fail by rolling a 4. So let's go into Ultramarines turn 1. Going into Ultramarines turn 1, a reminder that the Ultramarines have 11 command points available, and Zinch has 9 command points available. Going into the movement phase, this squad of 5 tactical marines sitting in the ruin will remain still. This land raider will have the chaplain disembark out in front. The newly disembarked chaplain will now move up to 6 inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling 5 additional inches. So the chaplain will move up to 11 inches total. However, it will begin by using 5 of its 11 total inches to move into base contact with the relic. Now that the relic is in base contact with the chaplain, he picks it up. And now that the chaplain has picked up the relic, it will use the remaining 6 inches of its 11 inches of total movement to move back towards the Ultramarine's deployment zone. Under the rules for the relic, it states a model with the relic cannot embark in a transport, leave the battlefield, or move further than 9 inches in any single phase for any reason. The key word there is a model with the relic. Since the chaplain only moved 6 inches after picking up the relic, this is legal. And so the ultramarines are now in control of the relic and almost have it back within their own deployment zone. This squad of 5 tactical marines will move up to 6 inches and will also 
also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling one additional inch, and the Ultramarines will re-roll that using the command re-roll, so they will go from 11 command points down to 10. But first, thanks to the Warlord trait Adept of the Codex on Rabout Gilmon, they get to roll a dice and on a 5 up, they get the command point back and they will not, so the Ultramarines are permanently down to 10 command points. And so here's the reroll on the advance roll, now getting 4 inches. And so this squad of tactical marines will move up to 10 inches total. This land raider will now move up to 10 inches. This third squad of tactical marines will move up to 6 inches. Rabau Gilamon will move up to 8 inches. Finally, the second land raider will move up to 10 inches. Going into the shooting phase, Zinch will begin by using the stratagem Warp Surge for two command points, bringing them from 9 down to 7. And the FAQ'd version of the stratagem states, use this stratagem at the start of any phase, select a unit of demons from your army, until the end of the phase you cannot reroll saving throws for this unit, but its invulnerable save is improved by 1 to a maximum of 4 up. And this will be used on the Warlord Kairos Fateweaver. And so we will begin with Rabout Gilmon, who will fire his Hand of Dominion at full range into this squad of pink horrors. Three shots hitting on twos, re-rolling, thanks to himself, getting three hits. Strength six versus toughness three means wounding on twos, re-rolling, getting two wounds in one re-roll. And here's the re-roll, getting a third wound. Minus one AP, so three four up invulnerable saves, passing two and failing one. And so one pink horror will go down, leaving nine left alive in the squad. This squad of five tactical marines advanced this turn, so they will not be able to fire. The chaplain advanced this turn, so he will also not be able to fire. This squad of five tactical marines will fire their four bolt guns at full range into the squad of nine pink horrors, and the last cannon will fire into the warlord Kairos Fateweaver. Beginning with the four bolt guns, four shots total, hitting on threes, re-rolling, getting all four hits. Strength four versus toughness three means wounding on threes, re-rolling, getting three wounds and one re-roll. And here's the re-roll, still failing to wound, so three wounds total. No AP, so three, four up and vulnerable saves passing all three. Now for one shot from the last cannon, which did move, so subtracting one from hit rolls, one shot hitting on a four, re-rolling ones and twos, getting a hit. Strength nine versus toughness seven means wounding on a three, re-rolling, getting a re-roll, and here's the re-roll, getting a wound. Minus three AP, so one three up invulnerable save, thanks to the stratagem. Really, it's a four up invulnerable save passing on threes, and it passes. This squad of five tactical marines is too far away to fire their bolt guns, but they will fire the their last cannon into the Warlord Kairos Fateweaver. One shot hitting on a three, re-rolling, and getting a re-roll, and here's the re-roll, now getting a hit. Strength nine versus toughness seven means wounding on a three, re-rolling, getting a wound. Minus three AP, so one three up and vulnerable save, which fails and cannot be re-rolled. And it will do D6 damage, and it will do one damage, so the Ultramarines will use one command point going from ten down to nine for a command re-roll to re-roll the one. But first, do they get the command point back on a five up? And they will, so the Ultramarines will go back up from 9 command points to 10. And now for the re-roll of the damage result, which will also roll 5, getting 5 damage. So Kairos Fateweaver will fall from 16 starting wounds down to 11. This Land Raider will fire its twin Heavy Bolter into this squad of 9 Pink Horrors, and it will fire its two twin Last Cannons into the Warlord Kairos Fateweaver. Beginning with the twin Heavy Bolter, 6 shots total, hitting on 3s. Rerolling thanks to Gilmon getting five hits and one reroll. And here's the reroll, getting a sixth hit. Strength five versus toughness three means wounding on threes, rerolling, getting five wounds and one reroll. And here's the reroll, now getting a sixth wound. Minus one AP, so six, four up and vulnerable saves, passing three and failing three. So three pink horrors will go down leaving six left alive in the squad. And now for the two twin last cannons, four shots total, hitting on threes, re-rolling, getting two hits and two re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls, getting one additional hit for three hits total. Strength nine versus toughness seven means wounding on threes, re-rolling, getting one wound and two re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls, getting all three wounds. Minus three AP, so three, three up and vulnerable saves 
passing two but failing one and it will do d6 damage and it will do five damage again so kairos fate weaver will fall from 11 wounds down to six finally this land raider will fire its twin heavy bolter into the squad of six pink horrors and it will fire its two twin last cannons into the warlord kairos fate weaver beginning with the twin heavy bolter six shots total hitting on threes re-rolling hitting three hits and three re-rolls and here's the re-rolls Getting two additional hits for five hits total. Strength five versus toughness three means wounding on threes re-rolling. Getting two wounds and three re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Getting all five wounds. Minus one AP. So five, four up and vulnerable saves. Passing two and failing three. So three more pink horrors will go down, leaving three left alive in the squad. Finally, the two twin last cannons, four shots total, hitting on threes re-rolling, getting three hits and one re-roll. And here's the re-roll. Still failing to hit, so three hits total. Strength nine versus toughness seven means wounding on threes re-rolling, getting two wounds and one re-roll. And here's the re-roll, getting a third wound. Minus three AP, so three, three up and vulnerable saves. Passing all three. Going into the assault phase, there are no charges to declare, which means going into the fight phase, there are no fights to resolve. However, going into the morale phase, this squad of pink horrors lost seven models this turn, and they have leadership of seven, but they are within six inches of Kairos Fate Weaver, who is a greater demon, and therefore they can use his leadership of 10. And so here's their morale check roll, and they roll a two, so they pass and nothing happens, thanks to using Kairos Fate Weaver's leadership. And so at the end of Ultramarines turn one, the relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarines. <laughs> Going into Zinch turn one, a reminder that Zinch has seven command points available and the Ultramarines have 10 command points available. Going into the movement phase, the squad of six Screamers is going to move up to 16 inches. This squad of three Pink Horrors will move up to six inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling six additional inches. So they will move up to 12 inches total. The Soul Grinder of Zinch will move up to 8 inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling 2 additional inches. So the Soul Grinder of Zinch will move up to 10 inches total. The squad of 10 pink horrors with the demonic icon and the instrument of chaos will move up to 6 inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling 5 additional inches. However, they get to add one thanks to their instrument for 6 inches of advance and up to 12 inches of total movement. The Warlord Kairos Fate Weaver, who is down to 6 wounds, will move up to 8 inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling 5 additional inches. So Kairos Fate Weaver will move up to 13 inches. The Flux Master will move up to 12 inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling 2 additional inches. So the Flux Master will move up to 14 inches total. The Lord of Change will move up to 12 inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling 4 additional inches. So the Lord of Change will move up to 16 inches total. This Demon Prince's Inch with Wings will move up to 12 inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling one additional inch, so Zinch is going to use one command point going from 7 down to 6 for a command reroll to reroll the 1. And here's the reroll, now getting 6 additional inches. So the Demon Prince will move up to 18 inches total. This Demon Prince's Inch with Wings will move up to 12 inches. This Demon Prince's Inch with Wings will also move up to 12 inches. Finally, this squad of 10 pink horrors will move up to 6 inches. Going into the psychic phase, Zinch will begin by using the stratagem Locus Conjuration for two command points, bring them from 6 down to 4. Use this stratagem at the start of your psychic phase, select a Zinch demon character from your army. Until the end of the phase, you can reroll any failed psychic test made for friendly Zinch demon units within 6 inches of that model. And this stratagem will be used on the Warlord, Kairos Fate Weaver, which will affect himself, the Lord of Change, the Flux Master, these two demon princes that are closer, this third one is too far away 
away, unfortunately. And also both squads of 10 Pink Horrors. And we will begin with Kairos Fate Weaver attempting to manifest Gaze of Fate. And Gaze of Fate has a warp charge value of 6, and it will pass with a 10, thanks to plus 1 from his Psychic Test bonus for being down to 6 wounds. So later this turn, Zinch will be able to reroll a single die. Now the squad of 10 Pink Horrors with the Demonic Icon and the Instrument of Chaos will attempt to manifest Smite from the Iridescent Horror onto the squad of 5 Tactical Marines that are just over an inch away. And Smite has Warp Charge value of 5. Rolling a single dice, of course, because they are pink horrors, and they will fail, so they get a reroll, thanks to the stratagem. And here's the reroll, and they will still fail. Now this squad of ten pink horrors will attempt to manifest Smite from the Iridescent Horror onto the closer squad of five tactical marines. And Smite now has a warp charge value of six, and it will fail with a two, getting a reroll thanks to the stratagem. And here's the reroll, and they will still fail to pass. Now the Flux Master will attempt to manifest Smite onto the closer squad of five tactical marines. And Smite now has a warp charge value of 7, and it will fail with a 3 thanks to plus 1 from the Everstav, so it will be rerolled thanks to the stratagem. And here's the reroll, and now it will pass with a 10, so Smite will go off. And it will do D3 mortal wounds, and it will do 2 mortal wounds. So 2 tactical marines will be removed, leaving 3 left alive in the squad. The Warlord Kairos Fateweaver will now attempt to manifest Smite onto the squad of 3 tactical marines. And Smite now has a warp charge value of 8, and it will pass with a 13 thanks to plus one from his psychic test bonus. However, that will be a Perils of the Warp. Thanks to his Warlord trait, however, Tyrant of the Warp, he will roll a d6, and on a two up, he ignores the Perils, and he will fail to ignore the Perils. But since he's down to six wounds, they'd rather him not take any more, so Zinch will use their Gaze of Fate reroll to reroll the one. And here's the reroll, and so now they will pass the two up for Tyrant of the Warp and he will not suffer perils. And because Smite was manifested with an 11 or more, it does D6 mortal wounds instead of D3, and it will do one mortal wound. But Zinch wants to do better than that, so they will use a command point for a command reroll going from four down to three to reroll the one. And here's the reroll, and now they will roll six mortal wounds. So the final three tactical marines will be removed. And that squad is wiped out. Luckily for the Ultramarines, however, the mission, the Relic, does not score points for first blood. So it does not matter that that tactical marine squad was first blood. Now Kairos Fate Weaver will attempt to manifest Boon of Change onto the Thousand Suns Demon Prince Zinch with wings that is over six inches away. And Boon of Change is warp charge value of seven and it will pass with an 8, thanks to plus 1 from the Psychic Test bonus. So rolling a d3 on the table, rolling a 1, which is extra limb, plus 1 attack. This Lord of Change is going to attempt to manifest both Smite and Bolt of Change onto this Land Raider, beginning with Smite, which now has a warp charge value of 9 and it will pass with a 10, thanks to plus two from the Psychic Test bonus. So it will cause D3 mortal wounds, and it will cause three mortal wounds. And the Ultramarines will use the Stratagem Armor of Contempt for one command point, bring them from 10 down to nine. Use this Stratagem when an Adeptus Astartes vehicle suffers a mortal wound. Roll a D6 for that mortal wound and each other mortal wound inflicted on this model for the rest of the phase. On a five up, that mortal wound is ignored and has no effect. Thanks to Rabout Gilmon, do they get the command point back on a five up? And they will. So the Ultramarines will go back up from 9 command points to 10. And now rolling for the 3 mortal wounds inflicted, and the Ultramarines will pass 2 of them, only failing 1. So this Land Raider will fall from 16 starting wounds down to 15. Now for Bolt of Change, which has Warp Charge value of 8. And that will pass with an 8, thanks to plus 2 from the Psychic Test bonus. And Bolt of Change will do D3 mortal wounds, and it will cause 3 mortal wounds as well. Thanks to Armor of Contempt, rolling 3 dice, looking for 5 ups. And once again, they will pass 2, only failing 1. So one mortal wound will go through, which will drop the Land Raider from 15 wounds down to 14. The Demon Prince that has Boon of Change manifested on it, and is not within 6 inches of Kairos Fateweaver, will attempt to manifest Smite onto the Land Raider that is down to 14 wounds. And Zinch will use the Stratagem Cabalistic Focus for one command point, bring them from 3 down to 2 left. Use this stratagem before attempting to manifest a psychic power with a Thousand Sun Psyker from your army that is within six inches of at least two other friendly Thousand Sun Psykers. You can add two to the psychic test. And because he is in a Thousand Suns detachment, he ignores Smite Nerf. So Smite 
has a warp charge value of five, and it will pass with an eight, thanks to plus two from the stratagem. So we'll do D3 mortal wounds, and it will cause two mortal wounds. Thanks to Armor of Contempt, rolling two dice, looking for five ups, and failing both. So two mortal wounds will go through, which will drop the Land Raider from 14 wounds down to 12. This Demon Prince's Inch with Wings will attempt to manifest Diabolic Strength onto this Demon Prince's Inch with Wings, and then he will attempt to manifest Smite onto the Land Raider. And Diabolic Strength has a Warp Charge value of 6, and it will pass with a 6. And now for Smite, which has a Warp Charge value of 5, and that will pass with a 7. So it will do D3 Mortal Wounds, and it will cause 2 Mortal Wounds. Thanks to Armor of Contempt, rolling 2 dice looking for 5 ups, and failing both again. So two more mortal wounds will go through, which will drop the Land Raider from 12 wounds down to 10. Finally, this Demon Prince's Inch with Wings will attempt to manifest Warp Time onto this Demon Prince's Inch with Wings that has Diabolic Strength and Boon of Change manifested on it, and then it will attempt to manifest Smite onto this Land Raider. And we will begin with Warp Time, which has Warp Charge value of 6, and it will pass with a 9. So this Demon Prince will now be able to move up 12 inches as if it were the movement phase. And now for Smite, which has a Warp Charge value of 5, and it will pass with a 6. So it will cause D3 Mortal Wounds, and it will do 3 Mortal Wounds. Thanks to Armor of Contempt, looking for 5 ups, and they pass 1 but fail 2. The Land Raider will fall from 10 wounds down to 8. Going into the shooting phase, six of these ten pink horrors are able to see and are within range to fire their coruscating flames into this squad of five tactical marines. So twelve shots total, hitting on fours, rerolling ones, thanks to the Demon Prince. Getting six hits and two rerolls. And here's the rerolls. Getting two additional hits for eight hits total. Strength four, thanks to the Flux Master nearby, versus Toughness four, means wounding on fours. Getting two wounds. No AP so two three-up armor saves, passing one and failing one. So one tactical marine will go down, leaving four left alive in the squad. The Soul Grinder advanced, so he will not be able to fire. This squad of three pink horrors advanced, but Coruscating Flames are an assault weapon, so they will fire into the squad of four tactical marines. Six shots total, hitting on fives, getting two hits. Strength four, thanks to being within six inches of the Flux Master versus Toughness four, means wounding on fours, getting one wound. This will go on to the tactical marine who's within the crater, so no AP, which means one two-up armor save, which passes. Finally, the other squad of ten ping horrors with the demonic icon and instrument of chaos will fire their coruscating flames into the squad of four tactical marines, and these ping horrors advanced as well. Twenty shots total, hitting on fives, rerolling ones, getting seven hits and four rerolls. And here's the rerolls. Getting one additional hit for eight hits total. Strength four thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness four means wounding on fours. Getting six wounds. No AP, but we will have to do them one at a time at first because of the one tactical marine in the crater. So six wounds left to resolve, one two up armor save, which fails and kills the tactical marine in the crater. So with five wounds left to resolve, we just have the three tactical marines who are not in the crater. So five three up armor saves. Passing two, but failing three. And so all four tactical marines will be killed off and that squad is wiped out. So going into the assault phase, there are two charges to declare. First will be from this Dean Prince's Inch with Wings declaring a charge into the Land Raider, which is down to eight wounds. And the second charge will be a multi-charge from the squad of six Screamers into the Chaplain and the Land Raider that is down to eight wounds, with the Land Raider being the primary target. Now strategically, it would make sense for them to also charge into the fully healthy Land Raider to tie it up so that it can't shoot now. Next turn. However, if they were to charge into the fully healthy Land Raider, they would then be within three inches of Rabout Gilliman, which means he'd be able to heroically intervene. And so, in order to avoid the heroic intervention from Gilliman, the Screamers will not charge the second Land Raider. And so, we will begin with the charge from the Screamers. And we will begin with the Overwatch from the Land Raider, starting with the Twin Heavy Bolter, six shots total, hitting on sixes, re rolling. Getting a good start with three hits and three re rolls. And here's the three rerolls, still failing to hit, so three hits total. Strength five versus toughness four means wounding on threes, rerolling, getting one wound and two rerolls. And here's the rerolls, getting one additional wound for two wounds total. Minus one AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves, passing one and failing one. So one Screamer will fall from two starting wounds, down to one. Now for the two twin last cannons, four shots total, hitting on sixes, 
Rerolling. Getting one hit, three rerolls. And here's the rerolls. Getting a hit, a fail, and a cock dice. So here's the cock dice. Still failing to hit. So two hits total. Strength nine versus toughness four means wounding on twos rerolling. Getting two wounds. Minus three AP, so two four up to vulnerable saves. And failing both. The first one won't matter, but it does D6 damage, and it does two damage. And then the second attack does D6 damage, and that will only do one damage, of course. So the Ultramarines are going to use a command point, going from 10 down to 9 for a command reroll to reroll the 1. But first, do they get the command point back on a 5 up? And they will. So the Ultramarines will go back up from 9 command points to 10. And now we will reroll the damage result, now getting two damage. Which is important because the damage does not carry over from model to model, so the first strike that did two damage will simply finish off the wounded Screamer, leaving five left alive in the squad. And now the second strike, which also did two damage, will finish off the two starting wounds on another Screamer, now leaving four models left alive in the squad. The Chaplain will also get a chance to fire, and he will fire both profiles from his combi plasma. However, he will use only the standard shots from the plasma gun and not supercharged shots. So beginning with the plasma gun, two standard shots, hitting on sixes re-rolling, of course rolling double sixes. So would have been great if those had been supercharged. Strength seven versus toughness four means wounding on threes re-rolling, getting two re-rolls, and here's the re-rolls. Now getting two wounds, minus three AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves, failing both. So one more Screamer will be brought down, leaving three left alive in the squad. Had those been supercharged, two Screamers would have been killed off instead of one. Now for the two shots from the bolt gun, hitting on sixes, getting two rerolls. And here's the rerolls, now getting one hit. Strength four versus toughness four means wounding on four rerolling, getting a wound. No AP, so one four up and vulnerable save, which fails. So the Screamer in the back will fall from two starting wounds, down to one left. And now for the charge range. Rolling six inches, and six inches is more than enough to make it in for both. So they are now engaged with both the Chaplain and the Land Raider, and they are over three inches away from Gilmon, so he cannot heroically intervene. So now for the charge from the Demon Prince into the Land Raider. No more Overwatch, because the Land Raider is already engaged, so here's the charge range. Rolling nine inches, and nine inches is more than enough to make it in. Going into the fight phase, we do not have to roll for Locust of Trickery because the Zinch units that are locked in combat are too far away from Chaos Demon of Zinch characters from the Chaos Demon's Codex. So we will begin with this Thousand Suns Demon Prince of Zinch with wings. Nine attack space with the two sets of Malefic Talons and Diabolic Strength and Boon of Change, all of which will be placed on the Land Raider, hitting on twos, re-rolling one, sixes generate additional attacks. Getting seven hits, one of which is a six, and two re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Getting another hit, which is also a six, and a cock dice. So here's the cock dice which rolls a 1, so it will fail to hit. So 8 hits total, but 2 additional attacks. Hitting on 2's, rerolling 1's, getting a hit and a reroll. And here's the reroll. So now getting 10 hits total. Strength 9 versus toughness 8 means wounded on 3's. Getting 9 wounds. Minus 2 AP, so 9 4 up armor saves. Passing 5 and failing 4. So the Ultramarines are going to use 1 command point going from 10 down to 9 for a command reroll to reroll the 3. But first, did they get the command point back on a 5 up? And they will, so the Ultramarines will once again go back up from 9 command points to 10. And now for the reroll on the armor save, looking for a 4 up, and they will pass. So passing 6, failing 3, and they are 2 damage piece. So this Land Raider will fall from 8 wounds down to 2. And the Ultramarines will use the Stratagem Counter Offensive for 2 command points, bringing them from 10 down to 8. This Stratagem is used right after an enemy unit that charged has fought. Select one of your own eligible units and fight with the next. And thanks to Adept of the Codex, rolling 2 dice, looking for 5 ups, and they fail to get the command points back, so the Ultramarines are permanently down to 8 command points. And the Ultramarines will use this stratagem on the Chaplain, who will place all of his attacks onto the Screamers. 3 attacks base with the Crozius Arcanum against the Screamers, hitting on 2's re-rolling, getting all 3 hits. Strength 5 versus Toughness 4 means wounding on 3's re-rolling thanks to Gilliman, getting 1 wound and 2 re-rolls. And here's
minus the rerolls. Now getting all three wounds. Minus one AP, so three, four up and vulnerable saves. Passing one, but failing two of them. And they are two damage apiece, so the Screamer in the back, who's down to one wound, will lose its last wound and be killed off, leaving two left alive in the squad. And then a second Screamer will lose both of its starting wounds and be removed. Now leaving just one left alive in the squad. And now the Chaplain will consolidate slightly. So now the Lone Screamer will place all of its attacks onto the Land Raider that is down to two wounds. Three attacks base, hitting on fours, re-rolling ones. Rolling triple ones, getting all re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls, now getting one hit. Strength six versus toughness eight means wounding on a five, and it fails to wound. But Zinch is going to use one command point, going from two down to one, for a command re-roll to re-roll the four. And here's the re-roll, and they will still fail to wound. So now the Land Raider will place its attack onto the Demon Prince. One attack since he's down to two wounds, hitting on a six, re-rolling, getting a re-roll, and here's the re-roll, still failing to hit. So now the Ultramarines will use the Stratagem Honor the Chapter for three command points, bringing them from eight down to five. Use this Stratagem at the end of the fight phase, select an Adeptus Astartes Infantry or Adeptus Astartes Biker unit. That unit can immediately fight for a second time. Thanks to Gilliman, we will roll three dice looking for five ups and they will get two of the command points back from using the stratagem Honor the Chapter. So the Ultramarines will go back up from five command points to seven. And this stratagem will be used on the Chaplain, who will place his attacks onto the Screamer. Three attacks base with the Crozius Arcanum, hitting on twos re-rolling, getting one hit, two re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Now getting all three hits. Strength five versus toughness four means wounding on threes re-rolling, getting two wounds and one re-roll. And here's the re-roll. Still failing to wound, so two wounds total. Minus one AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves. And passing both. Going into the morale phase, this squad of Screamers lost five models this turn and they have a leadership of seven, so they could fail on a three up, and they are not within six inches of a greater demon. So here's their morale check roll. They roll a six, so they fail, which means the final model will be killed off. So Zinch will use their last command point going from one down to zero for a command reroll to reroll the morale check. And here's the reroll on the morale check. And they will roll a two, so they will pass and nothing happens. Which means this final screamer will survive. And so at the end of Zinch turn one, the relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarines. <laughs> Going into Ultramarines turn 2, a reminder that the Ultramarines have 7 command points available, and Zinch has 0 command points available. Going into the movement phase, this squad of 5 tactical marines sitting in the ruin will remain still. The Warlord or about Gilmon will move up to 8 inches. The fully healthy Land Raider will move up to 10 inches. This Chaplain will move up to 6 inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll rolling two additional inches, so the Chaplain will move up to eight inches total. The Land Raider that is down to two wounds will have the squad of three Assault Centurions disembark. The newly disembarked squad of Assault Centurions will move up to four inches. Finally, the Land Raider that is down to two wounds will fall back out of combat up to three inches and it is now no longer within an inch of any enemy units. Going into the shooting phase, the Chaplain advanced, so he will not be able to fire. This Land Raider fell back this turn, so it will not be able to fire, and instead it will pop smoke. The fully healthy Land Raider will fire its twin Heavy Bolter into the Lone Screamer, and then it will fire its two twin Last Cannons into the Warlord Kairos Fateweaver, who is down to six wounds. Beginning with the twin Heavy Bolter, six shots total, hitting on threes re-rolling, thanks to Gilliman, getting four hits and two re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls, getting one additional hit for five hits total. Strength five versus toughness four means wounding on threes re-rolling, getting three wounds and two re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls, getting one additional wound for four wounds total. Minus one AP, so four, four up and vulnerable saves. Passing three and failing one. So the Screamer will fall from two starting wounds down to one. Now for the two twin last cannons, four shots total, hitting on threes re-rolling, getting three hits and one re-roll. And here's the re-roll, getting a fourth hit. Strength nine versus toughness seven means wounding on threes re-rolling, getting two wounds. And here's the two re-rolls getting one additional wound for three wounds total. Minus three AP, so three, four up and vulnerable saves, passing two and failing one. And it will do D6 damage, and it will do one damage, 
So the Ultramarines will use one command point going from seven down to six for a command reroll to reroll the one. But first, do they get the command point back on a five up? And they will not. So the Ultramarines are permanently down to six command points. And here's the reroll on the damage. Now getting two damage. So Kairos Fate Weaver will fall from six wounds down to four. This squad of five tactical marines will fire their four bolt guns at full range into the Screamer who's down to one wound because he is just over 12 inches away. And then they will fire their last cannon into the Warlord Kairos Fate Weaver. And the Ultramarines will use the Stratagem Science of Gilmon for one command point, bring them from six down to five. Use this Stratagem when an Ultramarines Infantry or Ultramarines Biker unit is selected to attack in a shooting or fight phase. You can reroll all hit rolls of one for that unit for the rest of the phase. If the unit is tactical squad or intercessor squad, we roll all failed hit rolls instead. But first, do the Ultramarines get the command point back on a five up? And they will not. So the Ultramarines are permanently down to five command points. So beginning with the four bolt guns, four shots total, hitting on the threes, re-rolling, getting two hits and two re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Getting one additional hit for three hits total. Strength four versus toughness four means wounding on threes. Getting two wounds. No AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves. Passing one and failing one. And so the Screamer will lose its last wound and be killed off. And that squad is wiped out. Now for the one shot from the last cannon, hitting on a three re-rolling, getting a re-roll. And here's the re-roll. Now getting a hit. Strength nine versus toughness seven means wounding on a three. And it wounds. Minus three AP, so one four up and vulnerable save, which fails. And it will do D6 damage and it will do six damage. And there's nothing that Zinch can do to negate that, so Kairos Fate Weaver will lose his last four wounds and be killed off. And normally that would be Slay the Warlord, but this mission does not count Slay the Warlord. Next, this squad of three Assault Centurions will fire their flamers into the squad of 10 Pink Horrors that have the Demonic Icon and the Instrument. Six D6 shots. And that was a pretty good roll, getting 28 shots. This weapon automatically hits, so 28 hits. Strength four versus toughness three means wounds on threes. Getting 21 wounds. No AP, so 21 four up and vulnerable saves. And there is at least one cocked dice in there. But it doesn't matter, they pass 10, failed 10, and one cocked dice. Which means the entire squad is completely wiped out regardless of what the result of that cocked dice would be. So we won't bother re-rolling it. So unfortunately, Unfortunately for Zinch, in a single volley, this squad of 10 pink whores is completely wiped out. Finally, Rabout Gilmon will fire his Hand of Dominion in rapid fire range into the Demon Prince of Zinch with wings. Six shots in rapid fire range, hitting on twos, re rolling ones, getting five hits and one re roll. And here's the re roll. Getting all six hits. Strength six versus toughness six. Means wounding on fours, re-rolling. Getting one wound and five re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. That's still pretty bad. Getting two wounds total. Minus one AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves. Passing one and failing one. And they are two damage apiece. So this Demon Prince will fall from eight starting wounds down to six. Going into the assault phase, there are two charges to declare, beginning with the squad of three assault centurions, which will declare a charge solely into the Demon Prince's Inch with wings that's right next to the Land Raider that is down to two wounds. The second will be Rabout Gilliman, also declaring a charge solely into the Demon Prince's Inch with wings that's next to the Land Raider that's down to two wounds. And we will begin with Rabout Gilliman. No Overwatch, so here's the charge range, rolling six inches. And six inches is more than enough to make it in. And now for the charge from the Assault Centurions. And here's the charge range, also rolling six inches. And this one right here is within five and a half inches of the Demon Prince, so the six inch charge will be more than enough to make it in. However, off of the charge, only one will make it within an inch for their Centurion Assault Launchers. So rolling one dice, looking for a four up, and they will get it. So one mortal wound will be inflicted. So the Demon Prince will fall from six wounds down to five. Going into the fight phase, we once again do not have to roll for Locust Trickery because there are no Zinch Demon characters from the Chaos Demons Codex within six inches of the fight. So we will begin with the squad of Centurions who will pile in up to three inches. And now all three are either within an inch of the Demon Prince or within an inch of a Centurion who's within an inch of the Demon Prince. So all three will get to attack. Seven attacks with their Siege Drills hitting on threes, re-rolling thanks to Gilliman, getting five hits and two re-rolls. And here's the Rerolls. 
getting one additional hit for six hits total. Strength 10 versus top in the six means wounding on threes, re-rolling thanks to Gilamon and getting all six wounds. Minus four AP, so six, four up and vulnerable saves. Passing five, failing only one, but they are three damage piece. So the Demon Prince will fall from five wounds down to two. And Zinch has no command points, so they will not be able to use the Stratagem Counter Offensive, which means we will continue with Ultramarine Charging Units, and the only charging unit left is Gilmon. So we're about Gilmon has six attacks base with the Emperor Sword, hitting on twos, re-rolling, getting all six hits. Strength eight versus toughness six means wound on threes, re-rolling, getting four wounds and two rerolls. And here's the rerolls. Still failing to wound. So four wounds total, but two of them are sixes, which do D3 mortal wounds apiece in addition to the normal damage. Which means that regardless of what happens, the Demon Prince is slain, because he is down to only two wounds. So we will simply put him out of his misery and remove his last two wounds. And the Demon Prince is killed off and Gilmon will choose not to consolidate. And the Ultramarines are going to use the Stratagem Honor the Chapter for three command points, bring them from five down to two. Use this Stratagem at the end of the fight phase, select an Adeptus Astartes Infantry or Adeptus Astartes Biker unit. That unit can immediately fight for a second time. Thanks to the Warlord trait Adept of the Codex, rolling three dice looking for five ups, and the Ultramarines will get one back. So the Ultramarines will go back up from two command points to three. And the Ultramarines are using this Stratagem on the Centurion in order to get them to pile in and then consolidate to better protect Gilliman from the next Zinch Psychic phase. And so now it will be much harder for Gilmon to be the closest enemy unit when Zinch is attempting to manifest Smite, and it also makes it much more difficult for Gilmon to be charged. Moving into the morale phase, there are no morale tests to take. And so at the end of Ultramarines turn 2, the Relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarines. <laughs> Going into Zinch turn 2, a reminder that Zinch has 0 command points available, and the Ultramarines have 3 command points available. Going into the movement phase, the Lord of Change will move up to 12 inches. This squad of 3 pink horrors will move up to 6 inches and they will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling 2 additional inches, so they will move up to 8 inches total. Now the Soul Grinder will move up to 8 inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling 4 additional inches. So the Soul Grinder of Zinch will move up to 12 inches total. The Flux Master will move up to 12 inches. This Demon Prince will move up to 12 inches. Now this Demon Prince will move up to 12 inches. Finally, this squad of 10 Pink Horrors will move up to 6 inches. Going into the Psychic Phase, this squad of 10 Pink Horrors will attempt to manifest Smite onto this squad of 3 Assault Centurions. Rolling only 1 dice, and Smite has a Warp Charge value of 5, and it will pass with a 5. Since there are 10 Pink Horrors in the squad, it will do D3 Mortal Wounds, and it will do 3 Mortal Wounds. So one Centurion will lose all 3 of its starting wounds and be removed. Now the Flux Master will attempt to manifest Smite onto the squad of two Assault Centurions. And Smite now has a Warp Charge value of 6, and it will fail with a 4 thanks to plus 1 from the Everstav. The Lord of Change will now attempt to manifest Smite onto the Land Raider that is down to 2 wounds. And Smite now has a Warp Charge value of 7, and it will pass with a 7 thanks to plus 2 from the Psychic Test bonus. And it will do D3 Mortal Wounds, and it will do 1 Mortal Wound. So the Ultramarines will use the Stratagem Armor of Contempt for one command point, bring them from three down to two. Use this Stratagem when an Adeptus Astartes vehicle suffers a mortal wound. Roll d6 for that mortal wound and each other mortal wound inflicted on this model for the rest of the phase. On a five up, that mortal wound is ignored and has no effect. But first, thanks to Gilmon, do they get the command point back on a five up? And they will not, so the Ultramarines are permanently down to two command points. And now they will roll to see if they ignore the mortal wound on a five up. And once again, they will not. So one mortal wound will go through. Which means that the Land Raider will fall from two wounds down to one left. 
And now the Lord of Change will attempt to manifest Bolt of Change onto the Land Raider that is down to one wound. And Bolt of Change has a warp charge value of eight, and it will pass with an eight, thanks to plus two from the Psychic Test bonus. And it will do deep three mortal wounds, and it will cause three mortal wounds, thanks to the Stratagem Armor of Contempt rolling three dice looking for five ups, and they will pass two of them, but still failing one which will finish off the Land Raider. Does it explode on a six? And it will. So the Ultramarines are going to use one command point going from two down to one for a command reroll to reroll the six. But first, do they get the command point back on a five up? And they will not. So the Ultramarines are permanently down to one command point. And here's the reroll on the explodes result, and it will not explode. So the Land Raider will lose its last wound and be removed. Next, this Demon Prince is each with wings will attempt to manifest Smite onto the squad of two Assault Centurions, and then he will attempt to manifest Diabolic Strength onto this Demon Prince is each with wings. Beginning with Smite, and they don't have to deal Smite nerf, so Smite has a warp charge value of 5, and it will pass with a 6, and it will do D3 mortal wounds, and it will cause 3 mortal wounds. So one more Assault Centurion will lose its 3 starting wounds and be removed, leaving just the Assault Centurion Sergeant left alive in the squad. And now for Diabolic Strength, which has a warp charge value of 6, and it will pass with the 9. Finally, this Demon Prince is inch with wings will begin by attempting to manifest Warp Time onto himself. And Warp Time has a warp charge value of 6, and it will fail with a 4, so it will not go off. And then the Demon Prince will attempt to manifest Smite onto Rabout Gilmon because he is slightly closer than the Assault Centurion Sergeant. And Smite has Warp Charge value of 5, and it will pass with a 12 which will perils, but it will also do D6 mortal wounds instead of D3. So first we will resolve the perils, doing D3 mortal wounds, and it will do two mortal wounds. So this Demon Prince will fall from eight starting wounds down to six, but then it will do D6 mortal wounds to Gilamon, and it will do five mortal wounds. So Rabout Gilamon will fall from nine starting wounds down to four. Going into the shooting phase, this squad of 10 pink horrors will fire their coruscating flames into the Assault Centurion Sergeant. 20 shots, hitting on fours, rerolling ones, getting 12 hits and four rerolls. And here's the rerolls, getting two additional hits for 14 hits total. Strength 4 thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness 5 means wounding on 5s. And that was really good, getting 11 wounds. No AP, so 11 2-up armor saves. Passing 9 and failing 2. So the Assault Centurion Sergeant will fall from 3 starting wounds down to 1 left. The Soul Grinder is each advanced, so he will not be able to fire. This squad of three Pink Horrors, who also advanced, will fire their Coruscating Flames, which is an assault weapon, into the Lone Centurion Sergeant. Six shots hitting on fives, getting one hit. Strength three versus Toughness five means wounding on a five, and it fails to wound. Going into the assault phase, there are multiple charges to declare, beginning with the Lord of Change declaring a multi-charge into the Assault Centurion Sergeant and Rabout Gilamon, with the Centurion Sergeant being the primary target. The Flux Master will declare a charge solely into the Centurion Sergeant. The Fully Healthy Demon Prince will declare a multi-charge into Gilamon and the Assault Centurion Sergeant, with the Centurion Sergeant being the primary target. And finally, the Wounded Demon Prince will declare a charge solely into Gilamon. And we will begin with the Lord of Change. And we will begin with Overwatch, starting with the Centurion Sergeant. Two Flamers, so two D6 shots, getting five shots. This weapon automatically hits, so five hits. Strength four versus toughness seven means wounded on fives re-rolling. Not that he needed the re-rolls, getting four wounds in one re-roll. And here's the re-roll, getting a fifth wound. No AP, so five three up in vulnerable saves, passing two but failing three. So the Lord of Change will fall from 16 starting wounds down to 13. And now for Gilmon with his Hand of Dominion in rapid fire range, six shots total, hitting on sixes, re-rolling, getting one hit and five re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Still failing to hit, so one hit total. Strength six versus toughness seven means wounding on a five re-rolling, getting a re-roll. And here's the re-roll, still failing to wound. And here's the charge range, getting eight inches. And eight inches is more than enough to make it in. Now the Flux Master will make its charge. The Centurion Sergeant's already engaged, so no more Overwatch. So here's the charge range, rolling eight inches. And eight inches is more than enough to make it in. 
Now for the charge from the fully healthy demon prince. Once again, no overwatch, so here's the charge range. Rolling snake eyes, which will fail. So now for the wounded demon prince, only into Gilmon. And here's the charge range, rolling seven inches. And seven inches is more than enough to make it in. Going into the fight phase, we do need to begin by rolling for Locust Trickery, rolling two dice, take away the highest. Hit rolls of two will not count, which could actually affect Gilmon. And so Zinch will begin with the Flux Master, placing its attacks onto the Assault Centurion Sergeant, who is down to one wound. Beginning with the Ritual Dagger, two attacks base, hitting on fours, re-rolling ones, getting one hit, strength four thanks to himself, versus toughness five means wounding on a five, and it fails to wound. And now for the blades from the Disc of Zinch, one attack, hitting on a four, re-rolling ones, failing to hit. The Lord of Change will now place all of its attacks onto the Assault Centurion Sergeant, who is down to one wound. The Ultramarines only have one command point, so they will not be able to use the Stratagem Counter Offensive. Five attacks base with the Staff of Zinch, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones thanks to the Demon Prince, getting three hits and two re-rolls, and here's the re-rolls, getting all five hits. Strength seven thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness five means wounding on threes, getting all five wounds, minus two AP, so five four-up armor saves. Passing three, but failing two. And not that it matters, but they are three damage piece. So the Assault Centurion Sergeant will lose his last wound and be killed off. And now the Lord of Change will consolidate up to three inches. And he is now in base to base with Gilmon, and also now locked in combat with the Land Raider. Finally, from Zinch, the Demon Prince of Zinch with Wings will place his attacks onto Gilmon. Eight attacks base with the two sets of Malefic Talons and Diabolic Strength. Hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, sixes generate additional attacks, getting seven hits and one re-roll. And here's the re-roll, getting an eighth hit, which also generates an additional attack. So here's the additional attack, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, getting a ninth hit. Strength nine, thanks to Diabolic Strength versus Toughness six, means wounding on threes. Getting six wounds. Minus two AP, so six, three up and vulnerable saves. Passing five, failing one. And they are two damage piece, so Rabout Gilmon will fall from four wounds down to two left. And now Rabout Gilmon will place all of his attacks back onto the Demon Prince. Six attacks base with the Emperor's Sword, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. Thanks to the Locust of Trickery, which actually makes a huge difference, getting three hits. Strength eight versus toughness six means wounding on threes, re-rolling, getting two wounds and one re-roll. And here's the re-roll. Getting a third wound, minus four AP, so three, four up and vulnerable saves. Passing all three. Going into the morale phase, there are no morale checks to take. And so at the end of Zinch turn two, the relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarines. <laughs> Going into Ultramarines turn 3, a reminder that the Ultramarines have one command point available, and Zinch has zero command points available. Going into the movement phase, this squad of five tactical marines will remain still. The Warlord, Rabal Gilmon, will remain locked in combat with the Demon Prince and the Lord of Change. The Chaplain, who is currently holding the Relic, will move up to six inches and will also declare an advance. And here's the advance roll, rolling five additional inches, but he will only be able to use three of them. So the Chaplain will move up to 9 inches total. The fully healthy Land Raider will have the Chaplain and the squad of three Assault Centurions embarked inside disembark out in front. The Land Raider will now fall back out of combat up to 10 inches. The Chaplain will move up to 6 inches. Finally, the squad of three Assault Centurions will move up to 4 inches. Going into the shooting phase, Rabal Gilmon is locked in combat and therefore will not be able to fire. This Land Raider fell back this turn and therefore will not be able to fire, so instead it will pop smoke. This Chaplain advanced this turn and therefore will not be able to fire. This Chaplain, however, the one that is not holding the Relic, will fire just the plasma gun portion of its combi plasma in rapid fire range with supercharged shots into this Soul Grinder of Zinch. Two shots hitting on threes, re-rolling, getting two re-rolls, and here's the re-rolls, getting two hits. Strength eight versus toughness seven means wounding on threes, re-rolling, getting one wound and one re-roll. And here's the re-roll, getting a second wound. Minus three AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves, passing one and failing one, and they are two damage apiece. So this soul grinder of Zinch will fall from 14 starting wounds down to 12. 
This squad of five tactical marines will fire their bolt guns into this squad of three pink horrors. Two of the bolt guns will be in rapid fire range and two will be at full range. And then the last cannon will fire into the Soul Grinder of Zinch. Beginning with the bolt guns, six shots total, hitting on threes, getting four hits. Strength four versus toughness three means wounding on threes, getting two wounds. No AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves, and failing both. So the two regular pink horrors will be killed off leaving just the iridescent horror alive in the squad. Now for the last cannon, one shot hitting on a three, and it fails to hit. Finally, this squad of three assault centurions will all fire their flamers into the soul grinder. Six D6 shots, getting 21 shots. This weapon automatically hits, so 21 hits. Strength four versus toughness seven means wounding with fives re-rolling, getting six wounds and 15 re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Getting four additional wounds for 10 wounds total. No AP, so 10 three-up armor saves. Passing six, but failing four. So the Soul Grinder of Zinch will fall from 12 wounds down to eight. Going into the assault phase, there are two charges to declare. First will be the Chaplain declaring a charge solely into the Lord of Change. And second will be the squad of three Assault Centurions declaring a charge solely into the Lord of Change. And we will begin with the Chaplain. No Overwatch, so here's the charge range. Getting seven inches. Seven inches is more than enough to make it in. Now for the charge from the Assault Centurions. Once again, no overwatch, so here's the charge range, getting four inches. And four inches is more than enough to make it in. And all three made it within an inch, so all three will have their Centurion Assault Launchers activate. Rolling three dice, looking for four ups, and they will get one, so one mortal wound will go through. So the Lord of Change will fall from 13 wounds down to 12. And now, the Flux Master will be able to heroically intervene into Rabout Gilliman. Going into the fight phase, we do need to roll for Locust Trickery, rolling two dice, taking away the highest, and that was a pretty useless roll. Hit rolls of one will not count. And so the Ultramarines will begin with the squad of three Assault Centurions, placing all of their attacks onto the Lord of Change. Seven attacks total with their Siege Drills, hitting on threes, re-rolling thanks to Gilmon, getting five hits and two re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Getting all seven hits. Strength 10 versus toughness 7 means wounding on threes, re rolling. Getting five wounds and two re rolls. And here's the re rolls. Getting all seven wounds. Minus four AP, so seven three up and vulnerable saves. And he fails four of them, only passing three. And they are three damage a piece, which is a total of 12 damage, which will slay the Lord of Change. So the Lord of Change is going to have to use his once per game reroll, thanks to the impossible robe, and reroll one of the twos. And here's the reroll. Getting a cock dice. So we will reroll it again. And here's the second reroll. And it will pass. So now the Lord of Change will only take nine damage. So the Lord of Change will fall from 12 wounds down to three. And now the Chaplain will place his attacks onto the Lord of Change. Three attacks from the Chaplain with the Crozius Arcanum, hitting on twos, rerolling ones, getting two hits and one reroll. And here's the reroll, getting a third hit. Strength five versus toughness seven means wounding on fives, rerolling. Getting one wound and two rerolls. And here's the rerolls. Still failing to wound, so one wound total. Minus one AP, so one three up and vulnerable save, which fails, and it is two damage. So the Lord of Change will fall from three wounds down to one left. So now that all of the charging units have gone, we will now resolve units that were already locked in combat, beginning with the Ultramarine since it is their turn, and Rabout Gilmon will split his six base attacks, three onto the Demon Prince, and three onto the Lord of Change. So beginning with the three attacks onto the Lord of Change, using the Emperor's Sword, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, getting three hits. Strength eight versus toughness seven means wounding on threes, re-rolling, getting all three wounds, but will also do two d3 mortal wounds and there is nothing that the lord of change can do about that so the lord of change will be killed off so the lord of change will lose its last wound and be removed so finally the three attacks from Rabout Gilmon using the Emperor's Sword on the Demon Prince, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, getting all three hits. Strength eight versus toughness six means wounding on threes, re-rolling, getting all three wounds, one of which is a six, which will do D3 mortal wounds. So here's the D3 mortal wounds, and it will do three mortal wounds. So this Demon Prince will fall from six wounds down to three left. 
So now for the three regular wounds, minus four EP. So three, four up and vulnerable saves. Passing two, but failing one, and they are three damage apiece. And Zinch has no command points, so they cannot attempt to reroll it, which means that this Demon Prince will lose its last three wounds and be killed off. So finally, we have the Flux Master, who will place his attacks onto Gilmon. Two attacks with the Ritual Dagger, hitting on fours, rerolling ones, getting a hit and a miss, so one hit total. Strength four, thanks to himself, versus toughness six, means wounding on a five, and it fails to wound. So now the one attack from the blades from the disc of Zinch, hitting on a four, rerolling ones, getting a hit. Strength four versus toughness six means wounding on a five, and it wounds. No AP, so one two up armor save, which passes. Going into the morale phase, this squad of pink horrors lost two models this turn, and they have a leadership of seven, so they could fail on a six. And here's their morale check roll, and they roll a one, so they pass and nothing happens. And so at the end of Ultramarines turn three, the relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarines. <laughs> Going into Zinch turn 3, a reminder that Zinch has 0 command points available, and the Ultramarines have 1 command point available. Going into the movement phase, the Soul Grinder of Zinch, that is down to 8 wounds, is going to move up to 8 inches. This Iridescent Horror is going to move up to 6 inches. The Flux Master is going to remain locked in combat with Rebout Gilmon. This Demon Prince of Zinch with wings will move up to 12 inches. And finally, this squad of 10 pink horrors is going to move up to 6 inches. Going into the psychic phase, the squad of 10 pink horrors is going to attempt to manifest Smite under about Gilmon from the Iridescent Horror. And Smite has a warp charge value of 5, and it will fail with a 3. Next, the Flux Master will attempt to manifest Smite under about Gilmon. And Smite now has a warp charge value of 6, and it will pass with a 9 thanks to plus 1 from the Everstab. So it will do D3 mortal wounds, and it will do 1 mortal wound. So Gilmon will fall from two wounds, down to one left. The Thousand Suns, Dean Prince of Zinch with Wings, will attempt to manifest Smite onto about Gilmon, because he's the closest enemy unit, and he will also attempt to manifest Diabolic Strength onto himself. Beginning with Smite, and he does not have to deal with Smite nerf, so Smite has Warp Charge value 5, and it will pass with a 6. And not that it matters, but it does D3 mortal wounds, and it would have done 2 mortal wounds. Which means Rabout Gilmon will lose his last wound, and be reduced to 0. Thanks to the Armor of Fate, since this is the first time that he is being slain in this game, he gets to roll a die, and on a 4-up, he will come back to life. And he rolls a 1, so he will fail. However, the Ultramarines will use their last command point, going from 1 down to 0, for a command reroll to reroll that 1. So here's the reroll to see if Gilmon comes back to life. And he will not, so Gilmon is permanently slain. So Rabout Gilmon will be removed from the battlefield. And now for Diabolic Strength, which has Warp Charge value of 6, and it will pass with a 6. Going into the shooting phase, the Soul Grinder will fire everything that it has into this squad of 5 Tactical Marines. Beginning with the Harvester Cannon, 3 shots hitting on 5 since he moved, rerolling 1s. Getting 1 hit. Strength 7 versus Toughness 4 means wounding on a 3, and it fails to wound. Now for the Flum Bombardment, which does D6 shots. Getting 4 shots. Hitting on 5s, rerolling 1 since he moved. Failing to hit, but getting 1 reroll. And here's the reroll. Still failing to hit. So all of the Soul Grinder shots failed to hit, and they would not have hit even if he had stayed still. This Iridescent Horror will fire his course getting flames into the squad of 3 Assault Centurions. 2 shots hitting on 4s, rerolling 1s, getting a hit and a reroll. And here's the reroll. Getting 2 hits. Strength 4 thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness 5 means wounding on 5s. Failing to wound. Finally, the squad of 10 pink horrors will fire their course, gaining flames into the squad of 3 assault centurions. 20 shots hitting on 4s, rerolling 1s. Getting 12 hits and 3 rerolls. And here's the rerolls. Getting 3 additional hits for 15 hits total. Strength 4 thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness 5 means wounding on 5s. Getting 4 wounds. No AP, so 4 2 up armor saves. Passing all four. Going into the assault phase, there are four charges to declare. First will be the Flux Master declaring a charge into the Chaplain. Second will be the Neem Prince of Zinch with Wings declaring multi-charge into the Centurion Assault Squad and the Chaplain, with the primary target being the Centurion Assault Squad. Third will be the Lone Iridescent Horror declaring a charge into the Centurions. And fourth will be the Soul Grinder of Zinch declaring a multi-charge into the Centurions and the Tactical Marines, with the primary target being the Centurions. And we will 
will begin with the Demon Prince. So we will begin with the Overwatch from the Chaplain who will fire both profiles from his Kami Plasma, beginning with the Plasma Gun, firing two shots in rapid fire range with standard shots, hitting on sixes, failing to hit. Now for the two bolt gun shots in rapid fire range, hitting on sixes, both of those fail to hit. Six D6 shots from the Flamers from the Centurion Assault Squad. And that was a really good roll, getting 24 shots. This weapon automatically hits, so 24 hits. Strength 4 versus Toughness 6 means wounding on 5s, and no rerolls because Gilliman is dead. Getting 12 wounds. No AP, so 12 3-up armor saves. Passing 10 and failing 2. So this Dean Prince is each with wings will fall from 8 starting wounds down to 6. And now for the charge range, rolling 7 inches. And 7 inches will be more than enough to make it in. Now for the charge from the Flux Master into the Chaplain. No more Overwatch, so here's the charge range, getting 10 inches. And 10 inches is more than enough to make it in. Now for the charge from the Soul Grinder. An Overwatch from the Tactical Marines, because they are not engaged yet. One shot from the last cannon, hitting on a 6, and it fails to hit. One crack grenade from the Sergeant, hitting on a 6, and it fails to hit. Three bolt guns in rapid fire range, 6 shots total, hitting on 6s. Getting one hit. Strength 4 versus Toughness 7 means wounding on a 5, and it fails to wound. And here's the charge range, rolling 10 inches. And 10 inches is more than enough to make it in. Finally, the charge from the Iridescent Horror into the Centurions. And here's the charge range, getting 7 inches. And 7 inches is more than enough to make it in. Going into the fight phase, thanks to the Flux Master, we do have to roll for Locus of Trickery. Rolling two dice, take away the highest. Hit rolls one will not count. And so we will begin with the Demon Prince of Zinch with Wings, who will place all of his attacks onto the squad of Assault Centurions. Eight attacks base with his two sets of Malefic Talons and Diabolic Strength. Hitting on twos, re-rolling one, sixes generate additional attacks, getting six hits, including two additional attacks and two re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Getting two additional hits, including one extra additional attack. So here's the three additional attacks, hitting on twos, rerolling ones, getting two more hits in one reroll, and here's the reroll, getting an extra hit but not generating more attacks. So getting 11 hits total. Strength 10, thanks to the Flux Master and Diabolic Strength versus Toughness 5, means wounding on twos, getting nine wounds. Minus two AP, so nine four-up armor saves. Passing four, but failing five. And they are two damage piece, but the damage does not carry over from model to model. So the first two strikes that will go through will remove a Centurion. The third and fourth strike will remove a second Centurion. And then the fifth wound that went through will reduce the Centurion Sergeant from three starting wounds down to one left. And now the Dean Prince of Zinch with Wings will consolidate up to three inches. He's not quite in base to base with the Chaplain yet. And he is now in base to base with the Chaplain, but he's also within an inch and therefore locked in combat with the Land Raider. Next, this Iridescent Horror will attempt to finish off this Centurion, but first he will pile in up to three inches. Two attacks base, hitting on fours, rerolling ones, getting a hit and a reroll thanks to the Beam Prince. And here's the reroll. Getting a second hit. Strength four thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness five means wounding on fives failing to wound. Next, the Soul Grinder will attack. And the Soul Grinder has five attacks base since he's at eight wounds, and he will split his attacks, putting two onto the Assault Centurion Sergeant and three onto the squad of Tactical Marines. However, with all of the attacks, he will use the Warp Claw instead of the Iron Claw, which means that each attack will make two hit rolls instead of one. Beginning with the attacks on the Assault Centurion Sergeant, so four attacks total thanks to the Warp Claw, Hitting on fours, rerolling ones. Getting one hit. Strength nine, thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness five, means wounding on a three. And it wounds. Minus two AP, so one four up armor save, which passes. And now for the six attacks, thanks to the Warp Claw, onto the Tactical Marines. Hitting on fours, rerolling ones. Getting three hits and two rerolls. And here's the rerolls. Getting two additional hits for five hits total. Strike nine, thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness four, means wounding on twos. Getting all five wounds. Minus two AP, so five, five up armor saves. Passing one, but failing four. So four tactical marines will be killed off, leaving only the last cannon alive in the squad. And now the soul grinder will consolidate. 
Finally, from Zinj, the Flux Master will place its attacks against the Chaplain. Two attacks with the Ritual Dagger, hitting on fours, rerolling ones, getting a hit and a reroll. And here's the reroll, getting a second hit. Strength four, thanks to himself, versus toughness four, means wounding on fours, getting one wound. Minus one AP, so one four up in the vulnerable save, which passes. And now for the blade from the disc of Zinj. One attack, hitting on four, rerolling ones, getting a hit. Strength four versus toughness four means wounding on a four, and it wounds. No AP, so one three up armor save, which passes. Now moving over to Ultramarine units, the Assault Centurion Sergeant will place all his attacks onto the Soul Grinder. Three attacks base with the Siege Drills, hitting on threes, re-rolling thanks to the Chaplain, getting three hits. Strength 10 versus Toughness 7 means wounding on threes, getting three wounds. Minus 4 AP, so three, four up vulnerable saves, passing one but failing two, and they are three damage piece. So this Soul Grinder will fall from eight wounds down to two left. And now the last Cannon Tactical Marine will place its attack onto the Soul Grinder. One attack, hitting on a three, re-rolling thanks to a chaplain nearby, getting a hit. Strength four versus toughness seven means wounding on a five, and it wounds. No AP, so one three up armor save, which fails, of course. So this Soul Grinder will fall from two wounds down to one left. This chaplain will place all of its attacks onto the Flux Master. Three attacks based with the Crozius Arcanum, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones thanks to himself, getting two hits and a re-roll. And here's the re-roll. Still failing to hit, so two hits total. Strength five versus toughness three means wounding on threes, failing to wound. Finally, this Land Raider, which is engaged with the Demon Prince, will place its attacks on the Demon Prince. Six attacks base, since it's still at full health, hitting on sixes, re-rolling thanks to the Chaplain, getting one hit, five re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls, getting three additional hits for four hits total. Strength eight versus toughness six, means wounding on threes, getting one wound. No AP, so one three up armor save, which fails. So this Demon Prince will fall from six wounds down to five. Going into the morale phase, this tactical Marine squad lost four models this turn. However, this Marine is within six inches of a chaplain and therefore can use the chaplain's leadership of 10, thanks to being an ultramarine, and therefore it is impossible for him to fail. And so at the end of Zinch turn three, the relic is currently being controlled by the ultramarine. Going into Ultramarines turn 4, a reminder that the Ultramarines have 0 command points available, and Zinch also has 0 command points available. Going into the movement phase, this last cannon will fall back out of combat up to 6 inches. This land raider is going to fall back out of combat up to 10 inches. This chaplain will remain still. This chaplain will fall back out of combat up to 6 inches. Finally, this Assault Centurion Sergeant will fall back out of combat up to 4 inches. And he is now over an inch away from any enemy units, but he is closest to the Demon Prince. However, apparently he was partially holding up the Soul Grinder, and when he was moved, the Soul Grinder fell over. So I tried to put the Soul Grinder back where he was, but his positioning might be slightly different. And we will begin with this Chaplain, who did not move, firing just the Plasma Gun portion of its Combi Plasma in rapid fire range with standard shots onto the Soul Grinder. Two shots hitting on threes. Getting one hit. Strength 7 versus toughness 7 means wounding on 4, and it wounds. Minus 3 AP, so 1 4 up in vulnerable save, which passes. Now the other chaplain, which fell back this turn, will do the same thing. It will fire just the plasma gun portion of its combi plasma in rapid fire range with standard shots into the soul grinder. Two shots hitting on 4 since it fell back this turn, thanks to being an ultramarine. Getting two hits. Strength 7 versus toughness 7 means wounding on 4s, failing to wound. The assault centurion's Sergeant will fire his two flamers into the soul grinder. Two d6 shots, getting nine shots. This weapon automatically hits, so nine hits. Strength four versus toughness seven means wounding on fives, getting three wounds. No AP, so three three up armor saves, passing one but failing two. And will it explode on a six? And it will not. So the soul grinder will lose its last wound and be killed off. Finally, this tactical marine, which did fall back this turn, will fire its last cannon into the Demon Prince. One shot hitting on a four, 
and it hits. Strength nine versus tough and six means wounding on a three, and it wounds. Minus three AP, so one four up from vulnerable save, which fails, and it will do D6 damage, and it will do two damage. So this Dean Prince will fall from five wounds down to three. Going into the assault phase, there are no charges to declare. However, the Flux Master will get to heroically intervene into the Centurion, and the Demon Prince will heroically intervene into both the Land Raider and the Chaplain. So beginning with the Flux Master, who will heroically intervene up to three inches. And now for the Demon Prince, who will heroically intervene into the Chaplain and the Land Raider. We will begin with Locust Trickery, rolling two dice to take away the highest. Hit rolls the three will not count, and that could actually matter. So first, the Flux Master will place its attacks onto the Centurion. Two attacks with the Ritual Dagger, hitting on fours, re-rolling ones, getting one hit. Strength four, thanks to himself, versus Toughness five means wounding on a five, and it fails to wound. Now for the Blades, from the Disc of Zinch, one attack, hitting on a four, re-rolling ones, failing to hit. And I just realized that a Heroic Intervention does not count as a charge which means technically the ultramarines should be going first when it comes to picking units to attack so because of that we will keep the flux master's attempts but we will have the centurion assault sergeant attack and pretend like he attacked first then the flux master then the chaplain and then the demon prince will get to attack so we will quickly resolve the centurion sergeants and he will first pile in up to three inches and now we will place his attacks on the Flux Master. Three attacks with the Siege Drills, hitting on fours, re-rolling ones and twos. Thanks to Locust Trickery, so that actually made a big difference. Getting one hit. Strength 10 versus Toughness 3 means wounding on a two, and it wounds. Minus four AP, so one four up the vulnerable save, which fails, and it will do three damage. So the Flux Master will fall from four starting wounds down to one. And so now we will go back to proper order, and the Chaplain will attack next. Three attacks with Crozius Arcanum, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, and threes will not count. Getting two hits. Strength five versus toughness six means wounding on fives. Getting two wounds. Minus one AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves. Passing one and failing one. So the Demon Prince will fall from three wounds down to one left. And now the Demon Prince will get to make his attacks and he will place all of his attacks on the Land Raider. Eight attacks base with his two sets of Malefic Talons and Diabolic Strength. Hitting on twos, re-rolling one. Sixes generate additional attacks. And that's not very good. Getting five hits and three re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Getting two additional hits for seven hits total, but they are also sixes, which will generate additional attacks. So here's the two additional attacks, hitting on twos, rerolling ones, getting two additional hits for nine hits total. Strength 10, thanks to Diabolic Strength and the Flux Master versus Toughness 8, means wounding on threes. And that is awful. Getting only four wounds. Minus two AP, so four, four up armor saves. Passing two and failing two, and they are two damage apiece. So the Land Raider will fall from 16 starting wounds down to 12. But now the Land Raider will get to attack back against the Demon Prince. Since the Land Raider is still at 12 wounds and has six attacks base, hitting on sixes, re-rolling thanks to the Chaplain, getting one hit and five re-rolls. And here's the re-rolls. Still failing to hit, so one hit total. Strength eight versus tough six means wounding on a three, and it fails to wound. Going into the morale phase, there are no morale checks to take. And so at the end of Ultramarines turn four, the relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarines. <laughs> Going into Zinch turn 4, a reminder that Zinch has 0 command points available, and the Ultramarines also have 0 command points available. Going into the movement phase, the Flux Master will remain locked in combat. The Demon Prince of Zinch with Wings will also remain locked in combat. This lone iridescent horror will move up to 6 inches. Finally, this squad of 10 pink horrors will move up to 6 inches. Going into the Psychic Phase, the squad of 10 Pink Horrors will have the Iridescent Horror attempt to manifest Smite onto the Lone Assault Centurion Sergeant. And Smite has a Warp Charge value of 5, and it will fail with a 4. So now the Lone Iridescent Horror will attempt to manifest Smite onto the Lone Assault Centurion Sergeant. And Smite now has a Warp Charge value of 6. And it passes with a 6. Now because there's fewer than 10 Pink Horrors in the squad, it only does one more wound but that's all it needs to do. So this lone Assault Centurion Sergeant will lose its last wound and be killed off. 
The Fluxmaster will now attempt to manifest Smite onto this fully healthy Chaplain that is locked in combat with the Demon Prince, because it is the closest visible enemy unit. And Smite now has a warp charge value of 7, and it will fail with a 4, thanks to plus 1 from the Everstab. And so now the Demon Prince, who is down to 1 wound, will attempt to manifest Smite onto the Chaplain, and he will attempt to manifest Diabolic Strength onto himself. And he doesn't have to deal with Smite nerfs, so beginning with Smite, which now is a warp charge value of 5. And it will pass with an 11. So it will do D6 mortal wounds, and it will do 5 mortal wounds. So this Chaplain will lose all 4 of its starting wounds and be killed off. And now for Diabolic Strength, which has warp charge value of 6, and it will pass with a 6. This squad of 10 pink horrors will have all of the models except for the one in the far back, this one back here, fire their coruscating flames into this lone tactical marine. The one in the back is just over 18 inches away, which is why he can't fire. So 18 shots total, hitting on 4s, rerolling 1s, thanks to the Demon Prince. Getting 11 hits and 2 rerolls. And here's the rerolls, still failing to hit, so 11 hits total. Strength 4, thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness 4, means wounding on 4. Fours. Getting five wounds. No AP, so five two up armor saves thanks to the ruin. Passing four, but failing one. So this final tactical marine will be killed off. This lone iridescent horror will not be able to fire because the land raider is engaged and the chaplain is further away than the land raider. Going into the assault phase, there are three charges to declare. First will be the flux master declaring a charge into the land raider. Second will be the lone iridescent horror declaring a charge into the land raider. And third will be the squad of ten pink horrors declaring a charge into the land raider. And we will begin with the flux master. The land raider is already locked in combat, so no overwatch. And here's the charge range from the Flux Master, rolling four inches, which will not be enough to make it in, because he's over five inches away. So that is a failed charge. And because of that, that would mean the Ping Horrors would have to try to go around the Flux Master to make it in. So the squad of ten Ping Horrors will decide to not declare a charge this turn. However, the Lone Iridescent Horror will still attempt to make it in. Once again, no Overwatch, so here's the charge range, rolling five inches. And that will be enough to make it in. Going into the fight phase, we do need to roll for Locust Trickery, so rolling two dice to take away the highest. Hit rolls one will not count. And we will begin with the Iridescent Horror since it charged. Two attacks base, hitting on fours, re-rolling ones, getting a hit and a re-roll. And here's the re-roll. Still failing to hit, so one hit total. Strength four, thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness eight, means wound on a six, and it fails to wound. Now for units that did not charge this turn, we will begin with the Demon Prince, and then if the Land Raider is still alive, the Land Raider will get to attack back. Eight attacks with the two sets of Malefic Talons and Diabolic Strength, hitting on twos, rerolling ones. Sixes generate additional attacks. Getting all eight hits and two additional attacks. And here's the two additional attacks, hitting on twos, rerolling ones, but no longer generating additional attacks, getting two additional hits for ten hits total. Strength ten, thanks to the Flux Master versus Toughness eight, means wounding on threes. Getting six wounds. Minus two AP, so six four-up armor saves. Passing two, but failing four, and they are two damage piece. So eight damage will go through, which will drop the Land Raider from twelve wounds down to four. And now the Land Raider will attack back against the Demon Prince. Since the Land Raider is down to four wounds, it only has one attack base, hitting on a six, re-rolling thanks to the Chaplain, getting a re-roll, and here's the re-roll, still failing to hit. Going into the morale phase, there are no morale checks to take. And so at the end of Zinch turn four, the Relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarines. <laughs> Going into Ultramarines turn 5, a reminder that the Ultramarines have zero command points available, and Zinch also has zero command points available. Going into the movement phase, the Land Raider, which is down to four wounds, will fall back out of combat up to three inches. The Chaplain really only has one chance to save himself, and that's by taking the offensive, so the Chaplain will move up to six inches. Going into the shooting phase, once again the Land Raider fell back so it will not be able to fire. The Chaplain, however, will fire just the plasma gun portion of his combi plasma using standard shots into the Dean Prince's Inch with Wings. So two shots from the plasma gun, hitting on threes, getting two hits. Strength seven versus toughness six means wounding on threes, getting two wounds. Minus three AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves, passing one and failing one. 
and so the Demon Prince will lose its last wound and be killed off. Going into the Assault phase, the Chaplain will declare a charge onto the Flux Master. And there is no Overwatch, so here's the charge range, rolling 8 inches. And the Chaplain is 6.5 inches away from the Flux Master, which means after subtracting 2 inches for charging through a crater, a 6 inch charge is still just enough to get within an inch. Going into the fight phase, we first need to roll for Locust Trickery, rolling two dice, take away the highest. Hit rolls one will not count. So we will begin with the Chaplain, who will first pile in up to three inches. And now he will place his attacks onto the Flux Master. Three attacks base with the Crozius Arcanum, hitting on twos, rerolling ones, thanks to himself, getting two hits and one reroll. And here's the reroll, getting all three hits. Strength five versus toughness three means wounding on threes, getting two wounds. Minus one AP, so two four up and vulnerable saves, passing one and failing one. So the Flux Master will lose its last wound and be killed off. And now the Chaplain will consolidate up to three inches. And he is now locked in combat with a squad of 10 Pink Horrors. So now the Pink Horrors will get to attack, and they will pile in up to 3 inches. And so 5 of the models, including the Iridescent Horror, are within range to fight. 6 attacks, hitting on 4s, getting 4 hits. Strength 3 versus Toughness 4 means wounding on 5s, and all fail to wound. So now the Pink Horrors will consolidate up to 3 inches. Going into the morale phase, there are no morale checks to take. And so, at the end of Ultramarines Turn 5, the Relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarines. Going into Zinch Turn 5, a reminder that Zinch has zero command points available, and the Ultramarines also have zero command points available. Going into the movement phase, this squad of 10 Pink Horrors will remain locked in combat. This lone Iridescent Horror will move up to 6 inches. Going into the Psychic phase, the squad of 10 Pink Horrors will attempt to manifest Smite from the Iridescent Horror onto the Chaplain. And Smite has Warp Charge value of 5, and it will pass with a 5. And it will do D3 Mortal Wounds, and it will do 2 Mortal Wounds. So the Chaplain will fall from 4 starting wounds down to 2. And now the lone Iridescent Horror will attempt to manifest Smite onto the Chaplain. And now Smite has a Warp Charge value of 6, and it will fail with a 3. Going into the shooting phase, the squad of 10 Pink Horrors is engaged in combat and therefore will not be able to fire. However, the Lone Iridescent Horror will fire its Coruscating Flames into the Land Raider. Two shots, hitting on 4s, getting 2 hits. Strength 3 versus Toughness 8 means wounding on 6s, getting 1 wound. No AP, so one two-up armor save, which passes. Going into the assault phase, this lone iridescent horror will declare a charge against the chaplain. No overwatch, so here's the charge range, rolling six inches. And six inches is more than enough to make it in. Going into the fight phase, we no longer have to roll for Locust Trickery because there's no Zinch Demon characters alive on the battlefield, so we will begin with the lone Iridescent Horror who charged, placing its attacks onto the Chaplain. Two attacks hitting on fours, failing to hit. So now moving on to units that did not charge this turn, beginning with Zinch and the squad of 10 Pink Horrors who will pile in up to 3 inches. And all 10 models are either within an inch of the Chaplain or within an inch of a model who's within an inch of the Chaplain, so they will all be able to fight. 11 attacks total, hitting on 4s, getting 6 hits. Strength 3 versus Toughness 4 means wounds on 5s, getting 2 wounds. No AP, so 2 3-up armor saves. Passing 1 and failing 1. So the Chaplain will fall from 2 wounds down to 1. And now the Chaplain will get to attack back and it will place all of its attacks onto the lone Iridescent Horror. 3 attacks base with Crozy's Arcanum, hitting on twos, rerolling ones, thanks to himself, getting three hits. Strength five versus tough three means wounding on threes, getting all three wounds. Minus one AP, so three four up and vulnerable saves, passing one but failing two. And so the lone iridescent horror will be killed off and that squad is wiped out. Going into the morale phase, there are no morale checks to take. And so at the end of Zinch turn five, the relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarine. And so now that we're at the end of the fifth battle round, we need to roll to see if the game will continue. On a three up, the game will continue, and on a one or a two, the game will end. And a three is rolled, so the game will continue. Let's move on to Ultramarines turn six. <laughs> Going into Ultramarines turn 6, a reminder that the Ultramarines have zero command points available, and Zinch also has zero command points available. Going into the movement phase, the Chaplain is going to fall back out of combat up to 6 inches. 
the Land Raider is going to move up to three inches. Going into the shooting phase, the Chaplain will fire just the plasma gun portion of its combi plasma in rapid fire range using standard shots into the squad of 10 pink horrors. Subtracting one from hit rolls since he fell back this turn, thanks to being an ultramarine of course, two shots hitting on fours, getting one hit. Strength seven versus toughness three means wounding on a two, and it wounds. Minus three AP, so one four up in vulnerable save, which passes. Finally, the Land Raider will fire its twin heavy bolter and two twin last cannons into the squad of 10 pink horrors. Beginning with the twin heavy bolter. Six shots total hitting on fives thanks to being down to four wounds. Getting two hits. Strength five versus toughness three means wounding on threes. Getting one wound. Minus one AP so one four on the vulnerable save which passes. Now for the two twin last cannons. Four shots total hitting on fives. All fail to hit. Going into the assault phase there are no charges to declare. Going into the fight phase there are no fights to resolve. And going into the morale phase there are no morale checks to take. And so at the end of Ultramarines turn 6, the relic is currently being controlled by the Ultramarines. Going into Zinch turn 6, a reminder that Zinch has zero command points available, and the Ultramarines also have zero command points available. Going into the movement phase, this squad of 10 pink horrors will move up to 6 inches. Going into the Psychic phase, this squad of 10 pink horrors will have the Iridescent Horror attempt to manifest Smite onto the Chaplain. And Smite has a warp chart value of 5, and it will fail with a 3. So now, going into the Shooting phase, the squad of 10 pink horrors will fire their Coruscating Flames into the Chaplain. 20 shots hitting on 4s, getting 10 hits. Strength 3 versus Toughness 4 means wounding on 5s. Getting six wounds. No AP, but plus one thanks to being in a crater. So six, two up armor saves. Passing all six. So now going into the assault phase, the squad of 10 pink horrors will charge into the chaplain. So beginning with Overwatch from the chaplain, he will fire both profiles from his combi plasma. We will begin with the plasma gun portion of the combi plasma, firing standard shots. Two shots in rapid fire range, hitting on sixes. Both fail to hit. Now for the two shots from the bolt gun, hitting on sixes, and both of those fail to hit as well. And here's the charge range, rolling five inches. And so a five inch charge is more than enough to make it in. Going into the fight phase, we do not have to roll for locust trickery, so we will begin with the squad of pink horrors, and they will pile in. And now they will all be able to fight. Eleven attacks hitting on fours, getting eight hits. Strength three versus toughness four means moving on fives. Getting three wounds. No AP, so three three-up armor saves. Passing two, but failing one. And so the chaplain will lose his final wound and be killed off. And so now a squad of pink horrors will consolidate up to three inches. And they are now locked in combat with the Land Raider. So the Land Raider will get to place one attack onto the squad of pink horrors. One attack hitting on a six. And it fails to hit. And at this point, the Ultramarines are going to concede the game. I think technically, Zinch is controlling the Relic, since the Relic is underneath the Iridescent Horror from this squad of 10 Pink Horrors. They technically did not move into contact with it in the movement phase, so I'm not sure if that counts. Please let me know in the comments down below. But regardless, the Ultramarines are going to concede, which means that Zinch will achieve a major victory. And so now that the game is over, I can give one or two of my final thoughts on this particular game. First and foremost, of course, is the major reason for concession, and that would be that since the Pink Horrors consolidated into combat with the Land Raider, even if the game were to continue, all the Land Raider would be able to do is either remain locked in combat or fall back and not shoot. And because we would be going into turn 7, Ultramarines turn 7 would have been the only chance the Ultramarines would have had to do any more damage in their shooting phase. So because the Land Raider would definitely not get another chance to shoot, there is no hope for the Ultramarines to kill off those pink horrors and take back control of the Relic. If the Chaplain had survived, what the Ultramarines would have done, if the game had continued on to turn 7, is the Chaplain would have fallen back out of combat up to 6 inches, and then the Land Raider would have charged in and tied up the pink horrors so that the pink horrors would not be able to shoot or charge the Chaplain, unless of course somehow how the Pink Horrors killed off the Land Raider in the fight phase. But the combination of another round of shooting and then the Land Raider charging in should have been enough to keep Zinch from being able to kill off the Chaplain had the game continued. 
and had the chaplain survived. Although, of course, this was the end of Battle Round 6, and so there was a 50% chance that the game was going to end anyways. And so had that chaplain survived and passed that very last armor save, the Ultramarines would have had a really good chance to win the game. Overall, I thought the game went pretty well, although it did go on a little long. Both sides definitely had a chance to win it all the way up to the end. The fact that Zinch managed to pull out the win, considering everything that happened earlier in the game, is somewhat impressive, especially after Gilliman in that one fight phase finished off both the Lord of Change and the one Demon Prince. But then the fact that he died and failed to come back to life ended up being one of the major reasons as to why the Ultramarines lost it in the end. The other big thing that I want to touch on is a couple turns ago, in one of the Ultramarines assault phases, Zinch was able to heroically intervene into multiple units. And that was because of a mistake on my part, and that was because I had forgotten that an army can heroically intervene in their opponent's assault phase, even if their opponent doesn't make any charge moves. And I had forgotten that that was FAQ'd in one of the recent updates that game Workshop had put out. Had I remembered that, I would have had the Ultramarines move in such a way so that Zinch would not have been able to heroically intervene the way that they did. And so I do apologize about that. Although, to be fair, in the end, it almost didn't matter because that chaplain ended up killing off the Demon Prince and the Flux Master all on his own and then survived multiple attacks from those pink horrors all the way until the end when he was finally slain. But I will have to remember that in other battle reports that need to be wary of enemy characters at all times, even if you're not planning to have any of your own models charge that turn, because they can still heroically intervene as long as they are within three inches, which meant that even though a bunch of units had fallen back out of combat, still ended up in combat in that fight phase, fights that they did not want to be in. It also took me a moment to realize that a heroic intervention is not the same as a charge, which means that technically you count models that heroically intervened as if they were already locked in combat at the beginning of the phase, meaning they alternate back and forth with your opponent's units. Now luckily, it didn't matter too much, but that would have meant that had the Flux Master killed the Centurion Sergeant, that Centurion Assault Sergeant still should have been given the chance to attack back. Luckily, he survived, so we didn't have to do some weird retcon to fix everything. That's about all I have to say about this particular game. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.